We need to shut the doors. Then. Okay. Uh, we will call the uh, to order the public hearing scheduled for 5.45 p.m. for the purpose of soliciting public input uh, pursuant to Connecticut Public Act 23-5 regarding additional early voting locations for August 13, 2024 primary election and the November 5, 2024 general election. Uh, if you'd like to speak, please sign up with our city sheriff, Steve Conway. You'll have a five-minute time limit. I will give you a one-minute uh, heads up. Mr. Conway, whatever you're ready. And excuse me, please uh, state your name and address for the record. First speaker tonight from 125 Kara Drive, Carol S. Santino. Good evening, my name is Corley Santana of 125 Kara Drive. Um, today I stand before you to advocate for implementation of multiple early voting sites in our city to ensure a fair and accessible democracy for all of our residents. Um, specifically for the general election, which um, is um, very important um, to increase the number of voter participation uh, that occurs. Waterbury, um, compared to other cities in the state of Connecticut, um, has historically lower voter, voter turnout, um, and that is sad. So having only one early voting site restricts access to the ballot for many members of our community. Factors such as transportation limitations, work schedules, and family responsibilities can make it challenging for individuals to travel to a single location, especially if you are relying on public transportation. Um, anecdotally, I know that it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to get from the east end of Waterbury to um, the downtown area by car. Um, and I used to take the bus in my youth, uh, and it would take me very, very long to get anywhere. Um, accessibility to the voting process is not just a matter of convenience, it's a fundamental aspect of our democracy. Every eligible voter should have the opportunity to participate in our election without undue hardship. By expanding early voting locations, we empower more residents to exercise their right to vote and have a voice in shaping our community's future. Moreover, multiple early sites can help alleviate congestions, wait times, uh, longer periods, and of course, increase voter turnout. By spreading out the voting locations, we can ensure smoother and more efficient voting process for everyone, reducing the risk of disenfranchisement due to logistical challenges. I urge the board to prioritize the establishment of multi, uh, multiple early voting sites in our city let us demonstrate our commitment to democracy by making voting more accessible, more inclusive, and more equitable for all of our residents. I understand that there is a fiscal commitment to uh, opening multiple sites, um, and I would say to that that we really can't put a price on democracy. Um, I shared the same message with our state legislators last session when this law was passed, and that was to make early voting accessible, make it fair, and make it count. So thank you for your time and consideration. Next speaker from 1400 Meridian Road, Martin Spring. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Martin Spring, 1400 Meridian Road. Um, I'm not a real big advocate of early voting. And uh, you know, we've seen what happened in Bridgeport and that was nothing to do with early voting, but that was a ballot drop off. But since the law is already in place, and it's going to take lo uh, different various locations from, uh, I think, August 13, 2024, primary election, November 5, 2025, uh, for the general election, and the determination where you're going to establish additional early voting locations. And I think uh, being former chairman of the Waterbury Human Rights Commission, and I'm very appreciative to be on that board for almost 15 years at least, um, I think it would be very appropriate if we turn around and we would set these uh, locations up in, uh, in the minority areas. And I know there's a lot of minorities, you know, I believe there are that just can't get to the polls. They have no transportation, a lot of them walk. And uh, I agree with this lady here. I think there's a lot of uh, 
a lot of folks that would appreciate that. I don't know how many locations are going to open up, but I think it would be very, you know, it would be good if we could turn around and put these in the areas again where people uh, have no uh, exit, can't get to the, uh, you know, buses or the, whatever, any type of transportation they want. And it's just, uh, you know, impossible for them to get where they want to get. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, it's, it would just be who me if you don't go ahead and do this. But again, like I said, I'm not a big advocate of this, but the law is already in place. So it is what it is. So if, if you guys are going to open up the polling places, at least put them in the various areas where people have access to get to the polls. And, and I thank you for your time and thank you very much. Thank you. That's the last uh, speaker, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. We'll close the uh, public hearing and we'll stand by till six. Thank you. Okay.
quite yet. Do you need this? You need the sign-in sheets, or you, just that? Okay. All right. You need envelopes? No. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, we will call to order the uh, regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen for Monday, March 25th, 2024. If everyone would please uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and a silent prayer. Alderman Alsa. Alderman Cavallo. Here. Alderman Dorso. Here. Alderman Hunter. Here. Alderman Lopez. Alderman Martinez McCarthy. Alderman Mosley. Here. Alderman Nujame. Alderman Rinaldi. Here. Alderman Rodriguez. Present. Alderman Salvio. Present. Alderman Taladine. Here. Alderman Weaver. Here. Alderman Zimmerman. Alderman D.G. Ovin Carlo. Here. 11 present, 4 absent. Okay, we have a quorum, and just for the record, uh, Alderman Zimmerman and Alderman McCarthy are both uh, sick and cannot attend. Alderman Lopez is out of state, and I do believe Alderman uh, Nujem is on his way. So, uh, before we start uh, public speaking, uh, the mayor would like to do a uh, presentation. So, Mayor Pernuski. Thank you. We'll just be one second. We're trying to get some of the teams down. You guys can come in. These guys don't fight. They just <laughs> look mean. So. They're just mean to the mayor. They won't be mean to you guys. <laughs> Thank, thank you for the few minutes, and I won't keep you very, very long, um, mostly because these guys have pizza waiting for them in the other room, so I don't want to keep them here very long. But um, I've had the opportunity over the last couple of weeks to visit a lot of schools in Waterbury um, just to see what's going on in the schools and meet the students and the teachers and the rest. But one of the things that I, I realized was we have a number of um, our athletes in the Waterbury schools who have done really well this season and won uh, league titles. and. So we thought it was appropriate that we bring them in here and honor them. And I have a bunch of citations for them, but we're going to give them out 
um, uh, down in Veterans Memorial Hall uh, because there's a lot of them. It'll take a long time to do it. But I wanted to recognize publicly here in the chambers and present to, to you uh, these students who have done so well in their athletic um, endeavors. And so we have three schools with us today, the uh, Catholic Academy of Waterbury, both their girls and boys teams are Greater Waterbury Parochial Basketball League champions. So they had, I think it were undefeated seasons this year and they won their championship. So congratulations and we're really happy to be here. We also have the Wallace Middle School girls team who's, who uh, are the Junior Naugatuck Valley League champions this year. So congratulations. And then the Waterbury Career Academy boys team is here this evening, um, and they're the Naugatuck Valley League champions. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> Just want to say that, you know, on behalf of the city, and I know the, the Board of Aldermen, we're very proud of you. We're happy to have you all with us today. We know how hard it is to uh, concentrate on all kinds of things these days, and uh, we, we really appreciate what you do, getting through school and getting all of this done. So uh, we look forward to spending a little time having some pizza with you tonight, but mostly we just want to say congratulations, and we're very proud of all of you. You've done a great job, and thank you. You, get, you, you make Waterbury look better, so thank you for that as well. You're great ambassadors. <laughs> Just before we go, we're going to do a group picture. You guys can all get in it, even though you had nothing to do with any of this. So you can bask, you can bask in their glory for a little while today. Do you guys want to come over? <laughs> we have a white kid. Yep. Okay, the uh, next item on the agenda would be public speaking. Uh, if you wish to address the board, please sign up with our city sheriff, Steve Conway. Please state your name and address for the record. You'll have a five minute time limit and I'll give you a one minute warning. Mr. Conway. First speaker tonight from 259 Wood Street, Marco Morales. Good morning everyone. Marco Morales, 259 Wood Street, Waterbury. Um, been at this residence for about 13 years now. I just want to take a few seconds out to just give a little complaint and then I will be following up with, uh, with my
my elected officials later on via email. So this way, bringing it, bringing it to the collective, basically. So 259 Wood Street is located in the Scoville Homes area. Scoville Homes, of course, is uh, a nice area. It's definitely very lively, but there are great people there. I would not live anywhere else. Everyone knows everyone. Everyone watches for everyone. So there. We're having a little bit of a problem, though, in the sense that I feel that we're becoming a little disconnected when it comes to um, code and or law enforcement in that area. Someone will be coming up uh, later on to speak a little bit more about it as to how it might be fixed. But the pr big problem right now, well, not a big problem. The situation that I'm going to be focused on is going to be my issue. So, of course, that makes my issue makes it the largest problem that I feel. But it will alleviate a lot of people's problems because I won't be upset anymore. Just kidding. The common areas have become a dumping ground. The area is supposed to be, of course, owned, but it's not. When I have tried to request assistance through 311 um, and reaching out to the city, some problems are addressed, other problems are pushed off. And it's just becoming a little bit of an issue. The biggest thing right now, which has been brought up just due to the fact uh, from the Welton School fire, is that what I believe, what I'm going to call a fire lane, because it's a through alley, so it gives me access to the back of my house, has been taken over by an individual who has now just parked there. So if at any time I need to bring someone through the back so they can access my home for the basement area, for work in the rear, and things like that, they are not easily brought into the back because the person that is living there in that area has decided that it is their parking spot now. I have very nicely attempted to speak to them. And we kind of came up with a little, you know, I'm going to bang on your door until you open it and then I'm going to tell you to move. But that's not the way that I want to fix it. I want to fix it to the sense where it's, it is what it is and no one can park there. No one should park there. I try and use... Uh, and, you know, hopefully with trying to get these little problems resolved, uh, maybe we'll notice a few other things that are easily fixed. But the reason that I bring up the Welton School is because if that person parks there at all hours, they do work, they do, you know, they're very nice people. But if they park there, God forbid there's anything that happens in the back of our house, we won't be able to get services back there as quickly as possible. So uh, I'm bringing it up to everyone. So this way it's at least on the record. I'll be reaching out to my officials via email with pictures and a little explanation and maybe a few thoughts as to how maybe it can be resolved. But the big thing is, is that whenever I've reached out to the police department, they tell me that it is a private piece of property and they are not allowed on there. And more importantly, rules cannot be enforced. Laws cannot be enforced. So I want to make sure that I'm going to, is it a, a, a through? Alley, should, can someone just choose it to be a parking One minute, sir. And, you know, can it be addressed in a, in a good, easy way? Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy your day. Next speaker from 259 Wood Street, Rachel Guest. Uh, good evening, Rachel Guest, 259 Wood Street. Um, and just to clarify, I am here tonight as a resident, um, not as you know anything else. I'm here as a resident of the Scoville Homes in the Wow neighborhood. Um, and I do have a handout for you tonight. Uh, I've lived there for 17 years. And when I moved in, the same problems that we're dealing with now existed then. And they still haven't been solved. Um, so I made an attempt to solve them, which is what's in the handout. Uh, there are a lot of misconceptions, a lot of confusion about the Scoville homes, and particularly those common areas. 
Uh, and so what I'm hoping is that, you know, by putting together a report on this, it will help clarify things and, and resolve some of these misconceptions. These are the only row homes in Waterbury. Um, they are different from condos. They are different from apartment complexes. This is uh, one of the misconceptions that we end up going around and around and around about. Um, each row house is individually owned the same as any single family house. So if you think of a condo association, you, you own your condo, but there's a condo association that has certain rights and responsibilities. That doesn't exist with the Scoville Homes. They are literally each one an individual property. They were built during World War I based on designs from Philadelphia. You think of Philadelphia, they're all those beautiful row homes. They're really well cared for. Um, the uh, overall history, I mean, they're beautiful homes. They're really well built. But they, I mean, you could say they made a mistake when they built them. When they built them, the common areas, which are intended to be service alleys, whenever you have row homes, you have to have a service alley. Um, when they built these, the Scoville Manufacturing Company retained ownership of the common areas and treated them as like a playground, service alley, all of that sort of thing. 1949, they turned over the three common areas to three separate corporations, which were responsible for maintaining those common areas. All three of those organizations are still listed as the owners of each of those common areas, but each of those organizations was dissolved during the 1980s. So since the 1980s, the common areas have been abandoned property. And this is what have gone around and around and around with people about over and over again. Um, there's been confusion thinking that the Scoville Homes Association, um, which was a neighborhood group, owned them. They never owned them. Um, so this is, you know, all addressed in the report. Um, and, and the biggest problem really is the common areas. And that's where I, I, I would really love it if the city could address this issue because from what I've seen, and if you look at the back, I've, I've looked at other cities that have row homes um, as to what sorts of things can be done. And there are kind of two options. One is that the common areas become city property and the city is responsible for maintaining them. The other option is that every single home's deed has to be modified so that you extend out the boundaries of each property into the common area, and the deed also has to include a, re a legal responsibility to share the maintenance and share the use of that, which is a lot more complicated. Um, I'm just throwing it all out there as, as what the options are. Uh, there are other problems that you know, in a perfect world, it would be great if the city could help with, um, but I know they're a lot more complicated. We have um, an increase in illegal subdivision of these row homes. So each floor, which is about 500 square feet in some of these houses, has now become an individual apartment. One minute. And they are, the basement apartments, for example, have only one exit. Um, and, and that's problematic, especially when there's room for only one car to park on the street per house. Um, so with the city's help, the Scoville Homes could become one of the most attractive neighborhoods in Waterbury, um, and I hope that this report will be helpful to that end. Thank you. Next speaker from 1400 Meriden Road, Martin Spring. Martin Spring, 1400 Meriden Road. Yeah, I really had nothing to talk about tonight, but you know, as Paul would always say, Martin, you're 10. Your five minutes is up, yeah. I'm sorry, Mayor, I always call him. Paul and I go back at least 20-something years, and anyway, he's a good friend of mine. Um, anyways, I have to agree with uh, Rachel Guest, and uh, I didn't know if you know the Rachel, but our family lived in uh, the Scoble House, houses when we were young in Ive Street, and uh, that's where we lived. My grandparents lived on Dykeman Street, my other grandparents lived on Vermont Street, so it was all around the area. And we used to walk around a lot all the time, and we never had any issues. But I did want to say something, and there was an awful lot of people here last time about the resolution that was supposed to be presented by the Water Human Rights Commission. And I'm glad the mayor took a stand on that, and many members of the board of Walden, and I thank you. You know, as I was going home talking to the missus about that later, and I have to retract what I said, because I feel as though that that's not an issue. 
that belongs, you know, for the Water Very Human Rights Commission, even though I'm not on that board no more. That's an issue, ladies and gentlemen, with the State Department. That's for federal government issue. That's something to do with Johanna Hayes issue, uh, Chris Murphy, Dick Blumenthal, any, any uh, state, uh, you know, I'm not state representative, but a federal rep. And that's where that issue would lie. And, uh, you, you know, because if they talk about human rights issues that are being perpetrated, think about what's going on in Ukraine. It's a, that's an issue there too, right? What's going on in Russia? We just heard about a terrorist attack. Uh, what's going on in Africa? Look, look what's going on in Haiti. I mean, there's, there's human rights issues all over the world. And, you know, we should be focusing on our issues here in the city of Waterbury. And, you know, I, I even know that the uh, CHRO would not even get involved in that. And I'm not trying to be d disrespectful to any race, creed, or color, or any, you know, anybody, any religious organization, whether it be Jewish, Catholic, or Protestant, or Christian, or Muslim. I'm just saying, or any other re religion. The bottom line is, you know, we should stay focused on Waterbury issues in the city of Waterbury. There's a lot of human rights issues in the city of Waterbury. You know, being involved with the veterans all the time, I, I hear a lot of sad stories, and Mike could probably tell you the same thing. Mike's a veteran too. There's a lot of veterans that need help, and that's a human rights issue. I mean, they're involved with so many different things, and they, they really, truly need help. And I know there's homeless out there too, and we should be taking care of them. And there's people walking around Waterbury, and you know, they're still panhandling, and I believe there's a lot of human rights issues that we could take care of. You know, there's, there's even, uh, look, we just had a shooting down here, down the street. And I'm, and I'm very proud of the Waterbury PD and the mayor, along with many people, went to one of the schools and they, uh, you know, they reenacted it and make sure we have safe schools. And uh, that's something I think, you know, that we should be looking at. I mean, just look at all the kids who are here today. This is a, a beautiful thing, as the mayor would say, that these kids are here, and it's showing Waterbury a positive light, if you will, positive things happening for Waterbury. But again, you know, not to keep repeat myself, but the bottom line is that we have a lot of human rights issues in the city of Waterbury that got to be taken care of. You know, you might have some human rights issues with uh, people to work for the city. You might have human rights issues and discrimination issues with the police department, fire department, or any departments in the city of Waterbury. And those are the issues, ladies and gentlemen, of Board of Baldwin. Those are the issues that the Human Rights Commission should look into. And by the way, I'm, I'm going to be speaking at the uh, Charter Revision Commission. And I really think, in my opinion, I brought this up many times on my own, that I think we should merge the Human Rights Commission with other commissions that coincide together and work together. And I know this- One minute. Several, okay, thank you, sir. Anyways, I know there's several and, uh, it, you know, different commissions that we could put together and work together. And, you know, I, I would be looking forward to work with uh, anybody, the mayor, any administration, you know, be it Republican or Democrat, because there's, there's so many things that gotta be done and resolved in Waterbury. And uh, I'll tell you to some mayor, I won't want your job for all, all the tea in China. It's a tough job. It's not an easy job, and I give you a lot of credit for what you do. All you guys on the Board of Wallman, it's not an easy job. But again, let's just focus in on whatever human rights issues in the city of Waterbury. And that's all I would have to say as far as that goes, because there's just so many things that, that have to be cleared up and fixed and, and done. And it's nice that we want to look all over the world and get involved, but you know what? That's up to the federal government, that's up to the Biden administration, or who's ever in office, or and that's up to the state department. That's time. Because I know, time to go. And that's exactly what they're supposed to be doing. That's their job, thank you. That's the last speaker, Mr. President. Okay, with that, the next item on the agenda would be the approval of the minutes from the Thursday, February 29th, 2024 special meeting and public hearing. Alderman Dorso, shows their motion? Motion to approve. Alderman Mosley. Second. Motion made and seconded. The discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries and the minutes are approved. At this point, we will recess into committees and we will start with the Finance Committee. I call the Finance Committee to order. We will begin with item number five. Your finance committee respectfully may I have a, a motion, Alderman Dorso. Motion to approve the resolutions is read. 
A second, Alderman Mosley? Second. Okay. Uh, Duncan, uh, Director of uh, Health. May I have a motion, Alderman Dorso? Motion to approve. A second, Alderman Mosley? Second. Is there discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion passes. Item number 10, your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve the following cancel permit as submitted by E. Gill Graveline Building Official Department of Inspection. Valiant Energy Solutions in the amount of $337.50 and Power Energy Solutions in the amount of $495. May I have an, a motion, um, Alderman Dorso? Motion to approve the canceled permits. A second, Alderman Mosley? Second. Is there a discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, opposed? The motion passes. Okay, and as far as the standing committee? Your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve the Director of Finance to make refunds to taxpayers representing overpayments of tax bills in the amount of $110,022.76 as submitted by Frank Caruso Jr., CCMC Revenue Manager. Alderman Dorsey may have a, a motion. Motion to approve the refunds as read. Alderman Mosley may have a second. Second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, uh, a vote in favor say aye. 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 If, as opposed, any opposed say no. The motion passes. So moved. So Second. Okay. We are adjourned. Okay. I call to order the Intergovernmental Committee meeting. Okay. Item number two. Your Intergovernmental Committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve amendment number one to the agreement for bulky waste disposal between Waterbury and FNG Recycling, LLC. This amendment extends FNG's original agreement for two years with the bulk waste disposal rates based on the negotiated rates from February 22, 2024. The disposal fee for surcharge items will increase 5% per year from the current rates. Submitted by David B. Simpson, Director of Public Works. Can I get a motion? And a second. Second. Any discussion? Alderman Rodriguez, do you have any discussion? Oh, okay. So you're getting on, on. ready. <laughs> uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed say no. Any abstentions? The motion passes. <coughs> Item number three. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve amendment number two to the agreement for the disposal and processing of curbside recyclables between Waterbury and FNG Recycling LLC. This amendment extends FNG's original agreement for two years at the same $85 per ton disposal rate as currently in effect. The original agreement was initiated under request for proposal number 6600 as submitted by David B. Simpson, Director of Public Works. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Any abstentions? The motion passes. Oops. Sorry. Item number nine. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve employee retirement savings plans, plan consulting and investment advisory services contract, fudicient uh, advisors, which will include, but not limited to the following, fiduciary governance, develop review investment policy statements and committee charter, 
plan diagnostic review, investment menu design, investment performance monitoring and reporting, investment manager search, review and recommendations, free review and analysis, employee communications and assistance, conduct vendor search and analysis during diagnostic phase, as submitted by Michael LeBlanc, Director of Finance. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. Any abstentions? The motion passes. Item 11, your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve of facility equipment use agreement with CT State Community College, Naugatuck Valley, for the period of April 9th, 2024 through December 31st, 2024, as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Waterbury Board of Education. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The motion passes. Item number 12. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve Amendment 2 to the Professional Services Agreement RFP number 7223 with Rubicon West LLC for online curriculum and lesson planning warehouse for Waterbury Public Schools with a one-year term and a total amount of $45,980 as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Waterbury Board of Education. And I believe this and the next couple of items uh, were recently approved at the Thursday board meeting of the Board of Education. Can I get a motion to approve? Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The motion passes. Item number 13. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve construction contract for roof replacement Kennedy High School, RFP number 7930, with Silk Town Roofing Inc. in the total amount of $3,000,000 $32,000, which includes an owner-controlled contingency of $150,000. This agreement is subject to minor, non-substantive changes to be approved by the Office of the Corporation Council, as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Waterbury Board of Education. Can I get a motion? Motion to approve. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Any abstentions? The motion passes. Okay. Item number 14. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve a construction contract for roof replacement at Tinker Elementary School, RFP number 7931, with Silk Town Roofing Inc. in the total amount of $876,000 which includes an owner-controlled contro contingency of $50,000. This agreement is subject to minor, non-substantive changes to be approved by the Office of the Corporation Council, as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Waterbury Board of Education. Can I get a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Alderman Rodriguez. Um, we have a, it's a quick question. I see that we're doing a lot of roofing. Uh, how long does uh, you guys see that uh, the roof are being changed in the schools? How long have it been that since they changed the roofing? Uh, good evening. Uh, Nick Albini, Chief Operating Officer with Waterbury Public Schools. Um, typically, it's late. we go much longer than they should be done. Uh, but they are quite expensive. These three roofing projects have a 30-year warranty. Okay. Um, and it, it, they are DAS-funded um, projects, which means 
uh, State of Connecticut will fund approximately 78 percent, and we have a matching fund of approximately 22 percent. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. <coughs> Any abstentions? The motion passes. Item number 15. Your intergovernmental committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve a contract for roof replacement at Sprague Elementary School, RFP number 7932, with Silk Town Roofing Inc. in the total amount of $864,000, which includes an owner-controlled contingency of $40,000. This agreement is subject to minor non-substantive changes to be approved by the Office of the Corporation Council as submitted by Carrie A. Swain, Clerk, Waterbury Board of Education. Can I get a motion? So moved. And a second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The motion passes. Uh, that concludes the business of the Intergovernmental Committee. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Great. The motion passes. Okay. With that, we will return to the regular order of business. Following items are on the uh, consent calendar. Item number one is receiving place on file. Item number two is on consent to approve. Item number three is on consent to approve. Item number four is receiving place on file. Item number five is on consent to approve. Item six is a receiving place on file. Item number seven, item number eight, and item number nine are on consent to approve. I would, item number 10, item number 11, and item number 12 are on consent to approve. Items 13, item 14, item 15 are on consent to approve. Alderman Dorso, is there a motion with respect to the uh, consent calendar? The consent calendar is read. Alderman Mosley. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any addi additions or deletions to the calendar? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion carries and the consent calendar is approved. With, with respect to the standing committee, the uh, chair would recognize Alderman Salvio, the chair of the finance committee. Your finance committee respectfully recommends that the Board of Aldermen approve the Director of Finance to make refunds to taxpayers representing overpayments of tax bills in the amount of $110,022.76 as submitted by Frank A. Caruso, Jr., CCMC Revenue Collection Manager. Motion to approve the refunds is read. Second. All right, so let's approve the uh, standing. Uh, so motion being made by Alderman Dorso yep. and a uh, seconded by Alderman Mosley. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of, of approving the tax refund signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. Um, the refunds, the ayes have it. The motion passes. The refunds are approved. Just uh, recess in the committee is one second. We do have to, uh, we do have to take up unfinished business uh, number one.
apologies. We are going to take up unfinished business number one to all the Medor. So, uh, can I get a motion to raise, uh, resolve ourselves into a committee of the whole? So moved. Alderman Mosley. Second. Uh, motion being made by Alderman Dorso, seconded by Alderman Mosley. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, resolving ourselves into the committee of the whole, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. We are sitting as a committee of the whole. Uh, unfinished business item number one. Uh, Item number one finish is, is the determination of whether to hold a public hearing and designate additional early voting locations for the August 13th, 2024 primary election. Uh, can I get a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion being made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Mayor. I'm sorry, I just think that the um the vote tonight has to be on whether you're going to have additional polling places in August. So the, I think it should be a motion to uh, either have them or not have them. Uh, and I would suggest at this point, you know, uh, we have time before the November election to make some decisions, see if there's additional state funding. As we know right now, the funding we have is insufficient to open additional polling uh, places for the August, uh, an August primary. We may not even have any primaries in August. That's an unknown. Um, so I would respectfully submit that the, the motion should be to not have any additional uh, polling places for August other than the one at City Hall. Okay, so uh, the uh, motion on the floor was to, uh, well, I'd like to resend the motion that I just uh, had uh, all the endorsement. Would you uh, motion to rescind my motion? So moved. Alderman Mosley? Second. Okay. All those in favor of uh, pulling the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed, no. Motion is rescinded. Uh, at unfinished uh, business item number one will be um, a motion to uh, not have any additional locations other than uh, 255, uh, 235 Grand Street for the um, early voting for the August 13th, 2024 primary election. Alderman uh, Dorso, is there a motion? So moved. Alderman Mosley. Second. Motion having been made and seconded. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of not adding additional sites to the early voting for August 13th, 2024, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the, uh, uh, any discussion? Hearing none, the motion carries. Uh, the item number one uh, passes to not have additional items to the, uh, for the August 13th, 2024 primary election. Uh, with that, uh, we have no other business uh, tonight. Is there anything for the good of the order? Alderman Rodriguez. Mr. President, for this uh, motion that we just passed, isn't just, isn't for primary and general election or just, just primary? Just the August uh, 13th only, we just voted on only to not Perfect. have it. Add, no problem. Add, add additional uh, polling places. Thank you. Mr. Anything else? Uh, Alderman Alsop. I'd like to just take this time to thank the city and thank my fellow aldermen for the support I received for uh, Mayor for the Bay on St. Patrick's Day. The city put on a fantastic ceremony for me and with many, many nice things said, even though some of them may not have been true. <laughs> but it was, it was truly a pleasure and I'm honored by it and I want to thank all my fellow aldermen for uh, the support that I had and the mayor. Alderman Eugene. Thank you for recognizing me, recognizing me Mr. President. On uh, this Saturday, almost said August, March 30th, we have the Jack Paul New James Community Foundation with the 4th District Alderman Easter annual Easter egg hunt at Hamilton Park from 12 to 2 o'clock. Easter egg hunt starts promptly at 1230. Anything else? Oh, Alderman Mosley. Yes, thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Chair. Um, I recently fielded uh, some community questions pertaining to the Waterbury Land Bank um, so I was wondering if we can uh, perhaps schedule a presentation for them to come before us and just give us an update on um, 
the projects that they're working on and, and just kind of um, provide more information for us and the public. Sure, yeah, we will reach out and uh, try to get them at one of the future uh, meetings, okay? Thank, Thank you. you. Anything else for the good of the order? Here and none, all them endorse so. It seems too early to say this. <laughs> yeah. The sun is still out. Go enjoy the rest of your evening. Motion to adjourn. Alderman Mosley. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? All those in favor of adjourning, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no? We are adjourned.